Welcome to FaithWorks, the enlightening and empowering program that builds your faith to help you overcome every single challenge in this life. My name is Kaude Adeshoga. I'm your host. I want you to sit back, listen, and be blessed. God bless you. There are only two things they note in heaven, while in heaven, two things. Hebrews 12 says we're surrounded by such a cloud of witnesses. And then in Hebrews 11, it lists the witnesses, the men of faith. Then he said, we're surrounded by such a cloud of witnesses. So there are only two things they note. So they're not aware of this service, really. Every act of faith, they register. Brother Susan also just did this act of faith because she's a witness. She's a witness. The second thing is, if anyone gets saved, obviously there's such rejoicing in heaven. It's like a commotion. And so another addition to the family. And then they are aware. But every other thing, they're not aware. The Bible says their works follows them. Their works, not their properties, their works follows them. And today, we want to look at the doctrine of eternal reward, which in Hebrews 6 says is an elementary doctrine. For example, one of the judgment seats is the seat of words. Don't, don't mind that idiot. They will ask you to come and explain on the day of judgment why that man is an idiot. And Paul said, every man will be judged according to my gospel, not the Old Testament, my gospel. So they will ask you from Matthew to Jude, show us why he's an idiot. If you can't show, you're in trouble. And I guess when Christians know this, they will guide their tongue better and talk wisely. That's why it says, the tongue of the righteous is health. May God anoint your lips with grace and salt so that your words will be acceptable. In Psalm 19, the meditations of your heart and your words will be acceptable in his sight. Amen? Amen. You can't query a man that pleases God. And God justifies. He may not live right before you. If God says he's right, he's right. He's a standard of right and wrong, not you. Not your wisdom. You can't decide who is right. You can't decide who is wrong. Even in the seat of power, you can't decide who is doing the right thing. It's God that decides. Pharaoh was destroying Egypt. God said, he's doing my will. He's doing my will. He's, in, he's on course. To the magicians, it's off course. To God, it's on course. He said, for this course, I raised you to show my power. It was about March 2000. That was my first vision ever. Not long I got saved. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. And it was March 2000. I was in the sitting room with my brothers and sisters. We were talking. All of us were talking. And suddenly a screen showed up on the wall. And none of them, they kept talking. But what they were saying faded off. I wasn't hearing, but they kept talking. I knew they were talking, but I didn't hear what they were saying. And the screen caught my attention. It was the size of the wall from big, like a cinema screen. And in that screen, I noticed a podium in a garden. And I noticed a church behind. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. No words on earth can describe beauty. Flowers, beautiful. And in that garden, the ministers of God were there waiting for the Lord. So they were like waiting for, there was a book on the podium, big book. And the ministers, so many of them, pastors, they were talking, like chatting, waiting for the Lord. You know, ah, what's up? How are you? And I was watching what's going on. And after a while, the Lord just showed up and everybody stood at attention. And he came on the podium. And they were calling him. They would stand before him. And he would, like, they're decorating. You know when they give people national honors? And then the president is giving them these medals. Then he'll call, he'll look into the record. And I saw great men of God with massive auditoriums. Just have, like, three medals. And they'll look in shock. Say, no, you can go. I saw a lady. She was a pastor's wife. She was not really a preacher. She was a singer. When she came, they put about 25 medals. She said, Lord, no, it can't be. He said, it is. He said, there must be a mistake. So he said, we don't make mistakes. I said, no. Because the great men of God, so far their highest was about three. 
See them in regalias, mighty men, shakers of society. They just take three. Three. When it came to her turn, she, get, she got 25. She said, no, I can't have this. This is to, the Lord said, you are faithful. You are worthy. He was saying that. You are worthy. You did what I asked you to do. You followed my plans. So come on, enter into the joy of your master. And they will roll into that church and be singing and, whoa! Then a great man of God came. He has about 2,000 branches. Well known all over the world. They looked at him as an act of mercy. They gave him one medal. As an act of mercy, one. And everyone was in shock. They said, all those schools you built, I didn't send you. University you built, I didn't send you. All the churches you planted, I did not send you. Lord was looking at a wasted investment. That's what we're looking at him. He's one of the greatest names in ministry today all over the world. So you can go. And he turned and said, learn from what I just showed you. Then he said, he said, don't listen to his tapes. Don't read his books. I don't want his spirit to corrupt you. Woo! Then the screen disappeared. Oh. And they continued talking. They were still talking. They didn't see anything. Hey, I said, what was that? I didn't even tell them anything. They didn't even know. They didn't even know I was, I was no longer in the conversation. I said, wow. And that brought me to this message, the doctrine of eternal reward. One day, we will leave this earth. We will stand before the throne of the Almighty. I tell people, if there's anything you shouldn't desire to be, is to be a minister of God. James 3 says, we will receive a stricter judgment. When I see people that want to be, all the great men that were using the Bible, they all dragged their feet. They didn't want to go. When I see someone that is eager to go, something is wrong. It's either it's not called. The true ones are called, dragged their feet. They don't want to go. God pushes them in. Praise the Lord. But I also bring good news to you. The Bible says in Hebrews eleven six, 6, he is a rewarder. Of them that what diligently seek him, he loves to reward you. That's why Paul said, If only in this life we have hope, we're of all men what most miserable because we serve a reward minded God. He said to Abraham, I am your reward. So he gave himself to Abraham as a reward. After looking at the earth, I said, Abraham, there's nothing in this life that is worthy. The oil wells, I check it, all the merchant ships, I check it. They don't deserve you. The best I can give you, I give you myself. I said, Genesis 15. He said, I give you, Abraham, myself as your reward. So I'm your servant. You are my master. He <laughs> said, that's blasphemy. Go and read the Bible well. Go and read it well. He said, I am your servant. Abraham, you are my boss. When they give, if they give you a wife as a reward, she's not your boss, right? If they give you a maid as a reward, she's not your boss. You are the master. Amen. Amen. I won't take too much of your time. I just want to let you know that um, 80 years is like vapor that appears briefly and disappears. But I was, I was calculating a thousand years is like a day before the Lord. Then I calculate if you live 80 years, then I calculate it's for about 14 seconds before the Lord. Come, two, three, 14. You've lived, you've born, you've achieved, you are gone. 14 seconds, you are gone. In because if a thousand is mathematics, if a thousand years is equal to 24 hours, in his calculation now, Abi, therefore, 80 years is 80 times Abi over. Is that not how they do it? Praise God. And I calculate it, it becomes 14 seconds before the Lord. So all you're appearing, all you're running up, and it's just 14 seconds before the Lord. You know what they say? Every man's life is like a vapor, just appears briefly and just goes. But when yours appears, it will make meaning, Amen. it will register history. In the name of Jesus. Matthew 16, 24. For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels. Then shall he reward every man according to his works. Romans chapter 14. I read from verse 10 to 12. Romans 14 from verse 10 to 12. Why do you judge your brother? Or why do you set up not thy brother? For we shall all stand 
before the judgment seat of Christ. If you read the book of Revelation very well, you see that they wrote, and the book of life was opened, and the books, plural, was open, plural. Each book for each judgment seat, about 21 of them, each book for each judgment seat. So they open it, and then they check everyone, then they reward everyone accordingly. You notice in heaven, they wipe away tears from people's eyes. They are not crying because somebody died. They are crying because of loss of reward. This is what you should have gotten. This is what you should have gotten. And you see people, after they've gotten so much, then they wipe out their reward because they spoke wrongly. And so then they cry. Then they say, shall wipe away the tears from their eyes. People think they won't cry in heaven. No, they'll be crying in heaven. They'll cry out of loss. That's what Revelation says. Abby, praise Jesus. You won't cry. Amen. I've said it. I'll present you before Almighty God with exceeding joy, without grief, in the name of Jesus. You know, I'm going to account for each and every one of you. You know, you will answer seven authorities in life. Seven. One of them is God. From this earth, you start answering. You will answer Satan. The gate asked Jesus, who are you? In hell. He said, I'm the Lord of glory. Mighty in battle. Open. He said, no. <laughs> he said, lift up your hands. So he said, who are you? He said, I'm the Lord of hosts. King of glory. Open. Then at the second command, he opened. He opened the second command. And you face the kingdom of darkness. That's why don't run your mouth yet. Because you're going to face them. You only use your mouth. You're going to face Satan. And you must conquer. Otherwise, you can't achieve. You will face God. Jesus said, who do men say that I am? And that will determine whether you make it in life. And all of them say, some say you are Jesus. He said, who do you say I am? If you answer wrongly, that blessing skips that man to another person that day. He said, thou art the Christ. He said, Simon Jaduna, blessed are you. He said, flesh and blood didn't reveal this to you. He said, flesh and blood didn't reveal this. That's why I said, I must, I'm going to answer the Lord. I'm answerable to all of you. But I promise by that special grace, I'll present all of you faultless, Amen. fruitful, Amen. overcomers, Amen. with exceeding joy Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. That's why I must be monitoring you day and night to make sure that you're on course and you're in line. That's why when people leave, you don't cry. It's a relief of a burden. Because another soul, you must, if they play to you, there are more souls to account for. And you must monitor everyone. A person that cries because people leave doesn't know what he's doing. Jesus accounted for 11. 11. 12, actually. He said, you know, the son of perdition is not under my tutelage. He's just an agent of darkness. Just breathed in and breathed out. But 11, this is what I did. This is what I told them. This I and the Lord said, you are okay. If he lost one, he said, I've lost none. If he lost one, he'll be in trouble. Praise Jesus. In Romans 14, verse 10, it says, verse 11, for it is written, as I leave every knee shall bow, and verse 12, so then every one of us shall give account of whom himself to God. I don't want to bore you with too many scriptures. 2 Corinthians 5.10. 2 Corinthians 5.10. I just want to establish that. So you know some people have died one year, they're still, they're, they're still sorting them out. They're still sorting them out. It's like those who died by faith. They don't need sorting out. They just enter the throne room. I say, you speak before seven authorities. You speak before the synagogue. When Eli challenged Hannah, you better have the right words on that day. Right words you are made. Wrong words is doom. That's why I said, when you stand before the authorities, don't meditate what you say because you can't think of what to say. You must not speak from your brain. Said, I will give you in that hour. That's what he said. What you must what say. And that's why Peter, the good thing about God, he's the one that will ask the question, then he's the one that will answer it for you. Praise God. Amen. That's why I like God's own. God asks you, what's two plus ten? Then God will say, the answer is 14. <laughs> and I say 14. <laughs> I'm telling God. God asks me, what's two plus ten? Then God says, the answer is 14. I say, God, the answer is 14. He says, blessed are you. He's the one that gives everything. I don't have to stress myself. When he doesn't speak to you at like that, ah, may that not be your portion. Amen.
Do you desire to live and operate God's way of doing things? Do you desire to understand how faith works? Fundamentals of Faith is a book written by Kayode Adeshoga. It teaches in simple terms how to operate the God kind of faith that helps you overcome all hurdles of life. Fundamentals of Faith is available for purchase at Trem Bookshop Obani Koro Lagos and Bible Wonderland Stadium Surulere Lagos. Get a copy today. So 2 Corinthians 5.10 says, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he had done, whether it be good or bad. So we've established one thing. We're going to account for her lives when we go over there. I just want to mention about four. Time won't allow me to mention all what we should we will take note of that the Lord will ask us to account for. But um, we account for about 21 things, but I'll just give you like three or four so that you can be more watchful. Now, he now told me, if someone leaves just 20 and he enters the kingdom, and someone leaves till 80 and he's in the church, you know the church is not the same as the kingdom. People confuse it. He says, we get saved by grace to faith. James says, we will through tribulation enter the kingdom. You can't tribulation enter the, enter the church now. No. So it's two different things he's talking about. The kingdom are those who sit on thrones in heaven. Jesus said, you have continued with me my temptation. Therefore, I bestow upon you a kingdom as my father has bestowed upon me a kingdom. That's a, then he began to pronounce. He said, that one, 30, in the king, those are the ones that will dwell in the holy city. While the general masses will be in paradise. There's a difference between paradise and the holy city. It's not everybody that can enter the holy city. For example, he said, be holy without which no man shall see God. It doesn't matter how well and nice you are. If you're not holy, you will never see God. You'll be hearing of God in heaven, but you will see him. That's how the word is. It's, they can't, you can't bend it. You can't twist it. You, there's nothing you can do. So, in heaven, those who walk by faith, that's why they wrote in Hebrews 11, it says, by faith, the elders, they are elders. And then in Revelation, it said, and I saw 24 thrones. Upon it sat 24 elders. So the elders, those who walk by faith, are the ones that enter the throne room. Those who don't walk by faith are in paradise. Because you are the one that will enter the throne room and see the Father face to face, one on one. Not only will you have thrones, it says you will have golden crowns. Amen. There's so much to live for in the Christian faith. Matthew 12, 36. It says, But I say unto you, every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. For by the words you shall be justified, and by the words you shall be condemned. No wonder they say, put a padlock on your mouth, on your lips. That's what the Bible recommends. Put a padlock. Praise God. Hallelujah. You know, he said in Matthew 5, he said, if you say to your brother Raka, say you shall be in danger of judgment. If you say that fool, you shall be in danger of hellfire. So everything is recorded. You know what an idle word is? Let me tell you what an idle word is not. Good morning. I'm very upset with you. I'm angry. That's a calculated statement. An idle word is a person saying, that beg, leave that idiot. That's an idle word. Something you don't really mean. He says, on the day of judgment, you will account for it. Whether you meant it or not. Praise God. Because Christianity is, the core Christians, a speaking spirit. We're speaking spirits. Everything is by words. The kingdom of darkness superimposes how? By words. The kingdom of God rules how? By words. That's why God said, let the meditation of your heart and the words of your mouth be acceptable before him. Praise God. So say what you mean. And mean what you say. And when you don't know what to say, keep quiet. Bible says a fool, even when he keeps quiet, is considered wise. Number two. Malachi 3.16 well, it's not really a judgment seat. They call it a reward seat. Malachi 3.16. It's not about tithes. Most people know Malachi for tithes. Amen. <laughs> then they that feared the Lord spoke one to another. The Lord hearkened it. Heard it. 
And a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord and thought upon his name. If you go to Revelation 20, 21, 22, they spoke about those books. One of them is a book of remembrance of what you said about the Lord. Be careful what you say about God. The Bible says on the road to Emmaus, after the resurrection of Jesus, two I think it's Luke 22, two disciples were walking on the way. And the Bible says the Lord walked quietly in between them to hear what they're saying. Anytime you are discussing the Lord, the Lord just shows up. You will see him. He wants to his drip, drop on what you are saying about him. If it is right, they'll write it in a memorial. You know, in the boat, in Mark, is it Mark 4, they accuse him, don't you care that we perish? That's a wrong accusation against God. God cares. But you know, there are people like that. Ah, you know, I've been thinking about this challenge I'm facing. I don't know why God is so mean. Jesus also say, said, I'm mean. Take note of it. I don't know why the Lord, you know, I fasted and prayed. The Lord did not answer me. Eh? Let me tell you what he will tell you. What he told the disciples. Oh, fools! Slow of heart to believe. That's not what you want the Lord to tell you. I, what I want him to tell you. Blessed are thou! Kyle Ade Sugar. Flesh and blood has not taught you what you just said about me. But my father, which is in heaven, therefore from this day. That's what I want the Lord to say. Sometimes he keeps quiet. He doesn't speak. But if you say anything about the Lord and he doesn't speak, something is wrong. He asks Philip, Where shall we get bread to feed 5,000 men beside women and children? He said, 200 penny worth of food cannot feed this people. The Lord just kept quiet. When the Lord doesn't respond to your statement, it means you have answered stupidly. He asks the lawyer, which is the greatest of all commandments, he said, to love thy God thy, with all thy heart and thy mind, and to love your neighbor as thyself is better than all the burnt offerings. The Bible says, Jesus seen, he answered discreetly, saying, you are close to the kingdom. Anything you speak into the earth of the Lord, he must respond. If he doesn't respond, you spoke foolishly. And if he gets angry, then he calls you, you are a fool for saying that. That's not what you want the Lord to do. So for speaking right about the Lord, they put it in a book and reward you on the day of judgment. They say, you said right about me. And for this, take this reward, take this reward, take this reward. You should go to where the knowledge of the Lord is being taught. Don't, look, don't, don't judge a church by cathedrals and air condition and padded seats. That's not the church. The church is where the knowledge of God is dispensed with accuracy. And there's grace to receive and implement it. Amen? We thank God for this and the men. God bless you. Say, so God does not dwell in a building made with hands. It's not a sentimental decision. If they are blind, they lead you into the pit, right? They're going to take you into the pit if they are blind. Blind doesn't mean physical blindness. They don't know God. You can't be greater than the teacher. You live by what he teaches, Right? So you will account for your discussions about the Lord and you must talk about the Lord whether you like it or not. So you better get good quality teaching on the Lord. Amen? Amen. Matthew 25 talks about talents. From verse 14 to 30, you know the parable of the talent, the five, the two, and the one. Giftings inside of us. On the day of judgment, say, me, I don't like, and I like to church. I like to sit at the back. I don't like anyone disturbing me. On the day of judgment, they'll ask, what did you do with what we gave you? You will account before the Lord. Amen? Amen. For actually, that one starts from the earth, then it ends in heaven. They collect it back from the earth here and give it to another person that is using his own well. Then on the day of judgment, they're now waiting for the man. I want to ask, what will you tell the Lord? To defeat the Lord, he must tell you what to say to him. Now, he doesn't tell you what to say, then he asks you a question. Why did you, you, you know, you know, you know, you know, the man with his single talent, when they, they, they went before the Lord, he was a very foolish man. The Lord said, but I gave you a talent. Why are you having just one? He said, I know you, he thought he had the answer. In all your entirety of wisdom, you can't answer the Lord. You can't. I was like, there's no wisdom against God. He said, I know you are not a man. So, 
I hid it, and the Lord now told him, you're a foolish man. This is what you should have done. You should have given it to the bank and deposited for interest. Even if you're so lazy, you can't invest. So take it from him and cast his portion with the hypocrites. When the Lord asked, he should have asked the Lord. In Mark 9, when um, the man that brought his son to the disciples to be healed, and they couldn't heal, and the Lord said, Lord, I, he said, if you believe, anything is possible. He said, I believe. Then he looked at the Lord's face. You know, you can tell me you have faith. My expression shows that you don't know what you're saying, right? Yes, the Lord didn't say what? Obviously, the expression on the Lord showed that he didn't have faith, but he was a wise man. He said, Lord, help my unbelief. That's what that man with the single tongue said, Lord, help me to know what to do. Then they would have told him what to say to the Lord that he may be justified with the one talent. I've always said it's not what you do that saves or destroys you. It's what you say. The man at the right hand of Jesus on the cross was a thief. The one at the left was a thief. Who went to hell? Who went to paradise? It's not what they did that took them to paradise or hell. It's what they said. One said, if you, are a, you say you are God's son, save yourself and save us. Where did it end? Hell. It's not about what he did. No. One said, don't you fear God? This man has done, we've done something wrong. This man has done nothing wrong. He said, Lord, remember me. You know, he said, today, you'll be me in paradise. What takes people to hell and heaven is not what they do, it's what they say. I believe you have been blessed by that message. And I know your faith has been built up. And I know all those challenges in life are all going to fall before you in the mighty name of Jesus. I want you to know Hebrews 12 says, Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. You need him in this walk. And so if you're out there and you don't have Jesus in your life, I want you to say after me, say, Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you're the only begotten Son of God. Come into my life, be my Lord and my Savior. It's as simple as that. Displayed on the screen is diverse information on how you can interact and reach out to us. Take advantage of it and I'll be expecting to hear from you. Till I come your way again same time next week, I want to tell you, don't give up faith works. It's working and it will work in your life. God bless you.